welcome back to the channel everyone. In recent videos I've been hitting you with a bit of a dark art kind of vibe. You know, skulls and dark stone ritual circles and all that kind of stuff. And I thought it was about time I moved away from that a little bit and did something a little bit more inviting. So in this image I was thinking what's like the most beautiful place that I would want to visit? Somewhere I would want to spend some time and relax. And I had this idea for kind of like a, a big lake or swamp area with these enormous twisted trees growing up like pillars out of the water. And in amongst the roots of these big trees, I wanted to put little villages kind of dotted around, beautiful um, ye olde architecture, you know, <laughs> like nice tranquil village vibes. And the idea being that they're a bunch of little fishing villages. And the only way to go from one tree to another is to jump in your little boat and uh, sail around. I thought that just seemed very relaxing, nice and calm. So you see me here blocking in the scene. And I'm pressed for time, guys. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, just had a baby. Um, he takes a lot of time, more than I thought he would. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to get videos done here and I'm skipping steps. Now, I don't recommend you do this, but, you know, if you're really pressed for time, just you know, this is a way to get something done. And that is to just skip the thumbnail process and go straight in and hope the idea sticks. Now, you're always going to end up with something that's a little bit less than what you could have done if you skip those initial steps. But, you know, if you get enough experience under your belt, you should be able to reach a point where whatever you do is going to have a certain level of finish and it's going to be at least reasonably successful. Uh, but if you're just starting out, try and throw as many ideas at the wall as possible before starting. Now, while doing this piece, I was still on a little bit of a mood kick, so I did want to fill this environment with fog and get that really nice effect of having foreground, midground, and background separated by different levels of atmospheric perspective. So I've got my layers structured in a way that has all of my foreground elements on one layer group, all of my midground elements on another, and then all of my background elements in the background. I've also got the houses themselves on their own separate layer. Uh, and that allows me just to quickly go into each different um, element within the piece and quickly define the light and dark side and give just a little bit of form to everything. Uh, so I start with a basic shape and then just add in the form and make it 3D. And at that point, um, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a easily frustrated artist, I guess you could say. Uh, when those layers start to piss me off, I just collapse the whole thing down. And some people may find that absolutely atrocious uh, and would recommend that you know you keep nice organized layers the whole time. But my brain just doesn't really work that way. Um, but don't worry, I, I do understand how that stuff works and I understand that it's also very important when you're starting out because keeping things organized allows you to sort of um, have a little bit more of a safety net there to catch you if you end up going down the wrong path. Um, and so in the next uh, episode of my How to Paint a Background for Your Character uh, series, I'm going to go into great detail on how to structure your layers for an environment and some of the different tools and tricks you can use to get the most out of having that layer structure. Things like um, layer masks and adjustment layers and things like that. But I'll save that for a more informative uh, episode that's coming up in the future. Uh, with this episode, I just want to talk more about kind of the thought process that's going into making the image. You know, the fun stuff, the important stuff. Uh, what am I drawing and why? So you'll notice that the first thing I did in this image is just create uh, kind of large shapes for the different elements in my scene. And the second thing was to turn the forms, make them look 3D. Uh, but they all look pretty rudimentary and basic. But as long as it's all reading as 3D forms, that's a great base to work from. If everything's in relatively good perspective, um, you're kind of happy with your composition and, and stuff like that and the basic color palette. Uh, that's a great platform to work from. Think about it like uh, a mannequin. It's just kind of the gray form of a human, but it doesn't have any distinguishing features. Uh, but you can dress a mannequin up in many different ways. So if you create first 
just an, a mannequin for your piece, just the basic form information. You can then go in and set dress as much as you want. And you can see me here doing that to this uh, main building here uh, on this tree. I'm trying different things because I know that there's going to be a building there. I just need to decide how it all looks. So because it was the main building, I wanted to make sure that it looked a little bit nicer than the other ones, that it drew a little bit more attention because it's my focal point. So I wanted it to stand out. But as I tried different designs, I realized that they looked too different to the other houses in this little village and I wanted it to look cohesive. So I had to go right back to the beginning and make sure that the shape language, the overall shape of the house was the same as the other ones. And then I just sort of gave it a little bit more of an architectural flair with some nice woodwork and stuff. And I thought that was a good compromise. Now, things that I'm thinking about when I'm designing this little village, um, it's not just the technical stuff. I'm not just thinking about how to render the forms, which direction the light's coming from. That stuff is really important and you do need to get it right. But the fun stuff that you want to think about is more asking yourself questions like, what is this building? What do people do there? Because that's going to give you a bunch of cool ideas for little details you can put in. So I was imagining this as a kind of fishing village. So uh, the only way to access it is by boat. So I needed to have piers all over the place, just kind of areas for boats to land and for people to get on. And I decided to carry that pier-like motif through to the other structures as well. So they all kind of feel the same, like they're part of the same little village. So you can see that that house on the right there, it's on these stilts that sort of go down into the water and kind of raised up. Now you'll notice that I recropped the image uh, just to give things a little bit more space. My reasoning for this was that I wanted to be able to describe the water a bit better and I wanted to get some boats in the water because it's an important element with the scene's story. So um, the way I had it cropped before, it was very close in and it was good for describing the village, but it was going to be difficult to describe the water itself because water has uh, reflective properties. So I, I pulled it back so that I could get some of those sky colors reasonably into the water so that it makes for a nice reflective surface uh, just easier to describe and it also allowed me to play around with a bit more fog and distance and speaking of fog and distance you can see here that i was smart enough to uh, not collapse down all of my layers <laughs> i actually kept just the foreground elements in their own little folder because i knew that i probably was going to do something like this later on and boy was I glad that I did keep them on a separate layer because putting in that bog was just so much easier. You can see that I'm being pretty messy with the water and water is an interesting subject to draw. I find it really fun because it's got layers. Uh, that's the way I describe it. There are layers to water. It's deep and you can see through the surface. Uh, just a little bit but then light also scatters off the top and you get these speculars and the surface of water is not just a flat sort of well usually not just flat and uh, undisturbed so it ripples in different ways and reflects the environment from different angles and you get these really amazing effects and I think a lot of artists are really fascinated with trying to capture the wet look of water and it's kind of a funny subject as well because when you're a kid you kind of just assume that water is blue. And why we assume water is blue is just anyone's guess. I think it's because the sky is blue and the sky is often reflected on the water, which makes it sometimes blue. But when you really start to study and paint water, it's rarely blue. <laughs> it's pretty much every color of the environment. Now, water can really look good. Now I don't know if I got the effect right in this piece. It's definitely not right at this time. This is not done yet. Um, because I'm still trying to figure out the color that I want uh, for the mood. Uh, I kind of bounced around with the mood on this one. I kept going for something that's a little bit cooler and then something that's a bit warmer. And I kind of landed in this place here where it's all pretty warm because I wanted it to be a friendly, inviting place. And warmer colors just seem to fit that theme better. Um, but I do just bounce around a hell of a lot because I'm not quite satisfied with it. It's a little bit too monochromatic for my taste. But 
if you uh, are messing with the environment lighting you can't finish the water because the water is just going to pick up whatever colors go into the environment so um, you have to change all of that stuff together so I just left the water really basic here and decided to give it a bit of a rest add some of the details into the focal point really start nailing down the design um, and then once I decided on the overall color palette and feel and mood of the piece I could then tackle the water last so I could get the most convincing watery effect so detailing up architecture is pretty difficult business you have to paint it in perspective and there is just so much detail and information in a structure that it's really hard not to go too far now i think with this building in the front i may have gone just a little bit too far there's quite a few high contrast areas um, and it's really hard to stay away from that and still convey that it's a structure because we know that there's all these different pieces of timber going across and those timber pieces have different planes on them it's really hard not to get stuck in the weeds but if you do go too far it's gonna feel really stiff and ugly and you just want to avoid that um, it's it pays to be a little bit impressionistic and you can see me here detailing up the tree as well and I go quite deep on the detail I put a ton of texture and detail into everything I, I really over render it and I often do this with the structures and with the bits and pieces in the environment but I don't intend to leave it there what I like to do is just add in a ton of details and then kind of wipe it all away I think I've spoken about this before in a previous video um, you can get stuck into making all these different details and then it, it kind of makes the whole thing feel stiff and lifeless and you really have to go back in and remove a lot of that information to allow the viewer's eye to kind of fill things in. It becomes more interesting if the viewer has to do a little bit of the work for themselves. Now, you can see me here going in and really tackling the water now. Uh, I'm being pretty impressionistic with this too, not too accurate with the, uh, with the reflections and stuff. I'm trying to get nice little brush strokes and things. I want areas of interest. I want it to be a little bit more playful. Um, as a general rule of thumb, when you're working with this kind of uh, reflective water situation, uh, the thing that is reflected in the water is going to be slightly darker and probably a little bit more saturated than the actual object that is being reflected. So just modify it down a little bit uh, with your color sliders and just chuck it in the water and see if it feels right. Uh, it pays to just look at reference and try and get your head around how uh, reflected objects appear. Now you can do the trick, uh, Photoshop trick of just making a selection of what you want reflected, uh, copying it to a new layer and then just kind of inverting it, making it upside down uh, and just putting that down in the water. But you're not getting an accurate reflection because if you're looking at a reflection, you're actually looking at the underside of the thing imagine a line beaming out of your eye hitting the water and then bouncing up into the underside of whatever is being reflected and that'll be what you want to draw anyway that's getting a little off into the technical weeds a bit difficult to uh, visualize in your head <laughs> but uh, this is coming to a close I'm just putting in this little boat here and chucking in some basic details and getting it all looking like it's nice and reflected um, and this one is done i'd like to thank you all for watching and i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it don't forget to like comment and subscribe share it with your friends all of that sort of business now i was thinking of a way to get you guys a little bit more involved in the channel um, i'd like you to sort of have a bit of a dialogue with me and comments are great but you know it's hardly a dialogue so i was thinking of maybe putting together some sort of discord chat that way if you guys feel like uh, painting along with me and you know maybe doing some of the stuff that I'm doing you could chuck your images up there and I could do some paint over episodes and things like that um, I'll look into it uh, if you think that that sounds interesting let me know um, and we can get that thing started anyway until next time guys thanks for watching and I'll see you later